Yo, hey everyone, Brian with you from the GameCom, and we are back doing some more AI-only battles in our championship series, and we're now starting group number two, so let's pop in the game. Let's check out everyone's starting positions. We might want to give it a turn just so everyone can throw their cities Let down, because it's going to be a little easier for us to tell, especially when it comes to, like, city-states and stuff like that. So, all right, we started in the northwest with the COD up there all by themselves. Interesting. Uh, and then Norway spotting the sexy, sexy uh, Congo colors. Uh, uh, is also to the north, and they seem to have a little bit of dif uh, distance between them and everyone else. It, it looks like they're going to have a decent amount of territory. Uh, to their southwest is uh, Poland, sporting the Halloween colors. It's no longer October. Not quite sure what you're going for there. And then uh, Indonesia, Gitaja, is to her west. It looks like we might be Archipelago or Snaky Continent, something along those lines. Um, now, unfortunately, Samaria and Khmer have settled right on top of each other. So that's going to be for... Well, that's going to be an interesting early game. It looks like uh, Samaria went first, so they were able to throw their city down. One, two, three, four. Yeah, and Khmer had to move over one uh, because they weren't able to settle right there so that's going to be an interesting early game most likely one of these two is going to end up knocking each other out um not quite sure yeah, there should be enough room i'm wondering why they spawned us so close to each other um but we're definitely going to see some competition between them samaria is definitely going to have the early advantage with the war cards but we shall see mongolia has a lot of room to the north and both of these guys are going to end up struggling probably against mongolia and then we have greece uh somewhat to an island all to herself eastward and then same thing with india quite a bit of room over there um but it seems like they might be on the same continent as japan and japan looks like they have a lot of room as well so let's go ahead and advance turns and let's see how things end up shaking out um, we're gonna want to pop in here and let's go ahead and auto intern enabled and let's get some things going and so okay okay so immediately based on everyone's location it looks like greece might be in a really good spot uh also too i kind of feel like norway might have a really good spot as well maybe not maybe oh, not because they only share with mongolia all right so we're definitely going to get a lot of early wars i think in this game and it looks like samaria's already at war nope you must have been fighting barbarians then. Oh, Japan's on a tiny little island. Ooh, okay. Your delegation is most welcome. So, we are getting more error score, I guess, because this is single player now. Yeah, this is a very interesting map. This is very, very interesting. I kind of feel... I, I kind of feel as if no one really has that much room, which is kind of interesting. Oh, my gosh. Oh my god, leave me alone. Yeah, this is interesting because not too many people have really a lot of room. And so what that means is everyone's going to be somewhat struggling for space. So um, for people to end up winning, they're going to have to do some conquering, it, it, it appears. Poland actually might have the most <laughs> the most room. Will we actually see Poland making it uh, into the knockout rounds? Is that a possibility? What? All right, looks like uh, Mongolia might be a little aggressive here. Or sorry, uh, Norway might be a little aggressive towards Mongolia. Yo, stop asking me questions here. We still don't have any wars going on yet, from what we can tell. Um, just barbarians fighting each other. Yeah, Greece has an island to all, all herself. Gorgo might end up making it out as well. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Indonesia is kind of screwed, space-wise. But, I mean, uh, let's just put it out there. Everyone's kind of screwed space-wise. Yeah, no one really ended up spawning with enough space. All right, Norway is currently now at war with Mongolia. And it looks like Norway has the advantage. Are you kidding me? The defending champion might end up getting knocked out here right away. Wow! This is not the first time this happened. That actually, I think, happened with our last one, too. I think Brazil ended up getting knocked out. And Russia got knocked out. And they're always favorites. So, that was what was really interesting about early... Uh, the second champ or yeah, the second championship series, uh, the early game is a lot of favorites got knocked out pretty early. It looks like she's gonna be able, uh, he's gonna be able to take one, maybe even two towns here. Wow, Mongolia is on the back edge and might just straight be dead here. Now Samaria, not at war yet, not at war yet. Okay, interesting. Japan has an island to themselves. Nope, they do share, they do share, but they have a lot of space though to grow. So, uh, uh, that should be fairly good for them. Two towns immediately fell for Norway. And are they going to be able to keep pushing? Or are they going to peace out? This is going to be interesting because if they end up, um, um, garrisoning the longship inside the town here, it's going to be hard to take. And we got a lot of barbarians now fighting against Khmer. 
Uh, I kind of want to pause the game here really quickly and take a look at everyone else without losing what's happening here. I don't want to take my eyes off this, really. Yeah, 30 defensive strength is going to be really hard to take. Be really hard to take. He almost has too many long ships right now. Uh, not enough warriors to actually end up killing some of his units because those long ships aren't going to actually help kill any of the units. But anyways, so are you guys still at peace? They hate each other, so there will be a war going on here pretty quickly. And I imagine Samaria should be able to tank uh, uh, or take the Anchor Wat. It actually appears as if he's moving in that direction to do that, but we shall see. Japan is up to four cities right now. They got plenty of space, so they're not really going to end up fighting anyone. India is also at four cities as well, and they still have quite a bit of room to grow, too. Um, and then they have a couple city states they might be able to go uh, uh, jack. Then we got uh, Greece with four cities and still a decent amount of room left. Um, we could actually look at this. Actually, probably only one more city there. Where India could throw down a few more cities easily, and then Japan definitely has a few more cities as well. Okay, then what was down here? Cardiff is down there by themselves, so no one else is over there. We got a little snaky island with two civs there. Uh, Indonesia is currently losing one of their cities to Poland. Dude, Poland might actually make it out of a group stage. What the heck? So... Yitaj is currently in third place. Poland's actually in a pretty de uh, distant, uh, uh, well, what? not really. They're a little bit behind, but taking over a city is going to make a big difference. Let's just kind of advance turns manually, just because, oh my god. I wanted to see if this was going to fall. No, she's going to be able to take it back. It looks like she's going to be able to defend it. Oh my gosh, this is so close. This is so freaking close. Oh man, even if she takes it, it might immediately flip backwards. Okay, let's keep advancing. Yeah, she's gonna have to... Yeah, she lost it. She has enough units to take it right back, though. But, okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. How goes our Mongolia War? My hotkeys, there he is. Mongolia is still sitting here with two cities and quite a few units. If they could take back one of their cities, they might have a chance, especially if that one rebels. But they might be too far behind the eight ball now, having lost those early cities, um, to really make a major difference. Under still no war here. Yeah, still no war there. Um, Indonesia? Mm, man, I don't know. She has quite a few warriors popping out, but I don't know. I don't know. It's looking worse and worse for her. Um, then over here... I'm thinking, I'm thinking Mongolia is just going to have to peace out. I don't know they're going to be able to take anything back. We have this <laughs> triangle of death over here, man. I wish I could zoom out a little further so we can take a look at like all these guys at once. Yeah, I wish we could zoom out just a little bit more. Oh my gosh, Khmer just got massively spawned on by barbarians, which is absolutely terrible. There's a chance that they lose their town here, and they're now at war with each other. Wow, that combo between the barbarians and Samaria is just going to absolutely screw over Khmer. Wow, this is an interesting game here. Interesting game here. I think Norway, I think we're looking at Norway, uh, Poland, and Samaria maybe being the three uh, who have the advantage right now in this particular game. Just because they're the ones that are going to be taking enemy towns. Yeah, there should be no reason for Samaria not to be able to take the capital here. They would have to play really bad if they end up missing that capital. How's everyone else doing? They're just kind of chilling, doing their thing right now. Yep. We're just going to keep advancing turns manually, just so we can pause and, and, and pay attention. Khmer is trying... Uh, sorry, not. Uh, Indonesia is trying to take her town back with uh, the galleys, but she's just running out of HP on her units right now. Samaria's got pushed back initially. Yeah, they got pushed back initially, but they still have a lot of war carts, which are very, very, very scary. Very scary. And did you guys end up piecing? No, you guys are still very much at war with each other, and they've not met anyone else, which is kind of funny. Yeah, they've not met anyone else. So, Norway's popping out more and more ships, which... It's their unique unit. It's nice, but it's not really helping. Yeah, Indonesia ended up um, losing pretty much her entire army now. So, she's going to want a piece if she hasn't yet. She's going to want a piece here as quickly as possible and then maybe try salvaging it by attacking later. But it's not looking good. It's not looking good for Indonesia. Who's one of my favorite civs in the game? One of my favorite civs. All right, let's see what everyone's arrows look like now. And we probably could get the auto turns going back. So we ended up in golden age. Yeah, whatever. Norway got a golden age. Everyone else got a, nor uh, a normal age. Is that going to make a difference? Probably not. There's not enough population in these two towns to flip. Now, if Norway starts throwing out a couple more towns, 
like here and here and ends up blocking in uh, Mongolia, there is a chance that loyalty will start flipping uh, as the game progresses. But for now, I don't think that's going to make a difference. Auto in turn. Let's enable. Let's get this going. Let's say OK. I don't care. And let's let the AI do their thing now. Uh, Sumer or Khmer is still being absolutely wrecked by these barbarians. My gosh, dude. My gosh. And Samaria, I'm not quite sure what they're doing yet. They have this line of troops. I'm not sure. It almost looks like they're now going for the Anchor Wat. Yeah. As opposed to the capital. Which, honestly, this is probably a better town for Samaria. At least initially. It's going to be a much bigger town, I think, long term. I think it's going to be a better production town. I and mean, this isn't a terrible town. But with the barbarians hitting it up right now. Yeah, maybe just worth uh, 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 let the barbarians do their thing and just uh, kind of pillage. All right. Indonesia's putting still a lot of pressure on Poland. They seem to be pretty uh, even killed between the two. And Norway's actually moved west quite a bit now, so Poland might have to be worried about uh, Norway and these longships, which are just spawning everywhere. Mongolia's still holding on to two. The Watt is currently being sieged down. Japan is just kind of doing their own thing. Same thing with India. They're both just kind of doing their own thing. I think India is going to be able to stay in the top three. I think India has enough territory. They don't really have a good science base, though. Yeah, they don't really have a good science base. Really, no one has a good science base. The only one who could probably get a lot of science was actually, what, a Khmer. But they're currently being sieged down and killed. So, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to build too many campuses when you're being completely destroyed. Yeah, and there goes the Watt. Flipped over to Samaria. That probably then gives Samaria access to all of this as well. So, I think eventually we're going to see Samaria v. Uh, uh, Norway eventually the question is is samaria going to be sated with that much blood or are they going to want to keep taking over khmer Never again. another natural wonder okay these guys are back and forth back and forth poland is struggling to hold on to badung uh, badung badung however you pronounce it yeah and um poland's got to be careful here because there's a lot of ships here uh poznan is going to be okay but uh krakow is yeah, definitely uh, interesting because it's a sea city and there is a lot of long ships there's a whole lot of long ships still trying Norway's still trying actually is putting pressure on both of these cities now um, but look at those archers so these long ships are just gonna get melted I think by uh, just all those archers and they're still fighting here it looks like they're actually now going for the capital there's a lot of military strength here there's a lot of military strength. Actually, only 210. Huh. Compared to almost 1,000 for Norway. Those longships, man. Those longships. Almost bugged the game there. Almost bugged the game. Yeah, so you two are still at war. I'm thinking Norway might end up declaring war on Poland because just look at that military strength difference. He's not going to declare as long as he's currently fighting Mongolia. So until that war ends, I don't see him starting another war. Japan's up to swordsmen over here, and they're settling a bunch of cities, so they definitely got uh, more than enough cities for them, um, at least a good starter base. The downside is they're going to eventually have to take on Samaria, and we're going to see what happens there. Um, they ended up settling another one, it looks like, and they still only have the two cities left. The downside is it's going to be so hard to take this city. Yeah, it's going to be so freaking hard to take this city, because they got to go, and they can only attack it one at a time, and there's no easy way around. So this actually might screw over Samaria because they might end up sacrificing a lot of troops trying to take that town over. And then they might end up getting jumped on by Japan and or uh, Norway. We'll see. What's happening here? You guys are still at war. And you guys are still at war. Indonesia is currently suffering some loyalty issues. It's not super terrible, though. And everything else is pretty, um, pretty even right now. No one's really doing any work. How is Gorgo doing over here? 379 on military. Science is about 22. Gilgamesh is rolling with that science. Gilgamesh is probably going to end up going... Yeah, he's got a lot of science here. Yeah, he's got a lot of potential campuses. And then he's got all those ziggurats as well. So, yeah, Samaria is probably going to be the one that's going to end up uh, 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 shooting off the rockets first. Most likely. Most likely. Gandhi's not too far behind, though, in science. And it looks like Gandhi maybe decided to go science? But he also looks like he's potentially doing religion. We should probably take a look and see who has religions. So, Poland, Samaria, Japan, Indonesia, India. 
Okay. Score victory right now. We got Gandhi in first, Gilgamesh in second, Gorgo in third. Ironically, Norway, if the game ended right now, Norway, with all of their work, all of their um, effort, all of their domination, they're not even in. Because they didn't get uh, religion. Basically. They didn't get any religious points. And that's the only... The, ah, Gorgo. Gorgo must just have a slightly larger empire. No, they have a larger empire. Technology, they're a little behind in technology. Wonders are the same. Air score, they're a little better. So it's the civics. So Gorgo's basically winning because of civics. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what is culture looking like? Gorgo's doing really good. 101 uh, 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 culture this early in the game is pretty decent. Unfortunately for her, Gandhi also has a lot of culture. So she's not going to be able to just run away with it and have a very easy victory. But she is definitely ahead right now. Culture, 101. 17 tourism per turn. Yeah, I don't think she's going to be able to run away with it. I think it's still going to have to be a science victory. Most likely. But we shall see. We shall see. Uh, Thom is slowly getting taken, but Samara is out of troops. So it looks like they're going to be able to hold on to their capital. Uh, we got another era here. Uh, that era is Gandhi and Gilgamesh with the Golden Era. Uh, then dark, or Normal Age for Japan and Greece and Dark Age for everyone else. Which means there might be some loyalty issues. It says positive. Okay, maybe not. That one says positive too. Japan's not anywhere close. And then Greece is nowhere close as well to anyone. Is Greece and India fighting? Remember, she actually wants to declare war on people. So, how's this war going? Indonesia did get swordsmen. You're still at war with Norway? Yeah, as long as you're at war with Norway, they're not going to end up fighting. She ended up starting to put her cities up here. So, you know, Indonesia's sticking around. They're sticking around. They're pretty far behind, but, you know, they're not out yet. So we'll see. We'll see how this continues. We'll see how this continues. And she has better troops right now, too. So she maybe could potentially end up taking some stuff, but we shall see. 100%, let's do um, science. Once again, I'm not trying I'm trying not to adjust things. And we're going to do city center because that's usually what they vote for. I'm just trying not to make an imprint on this. Culture and city center. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Someone called a special session of the World Congress. Um, I won't be able to come in on it, obviously. I'm assuming it's uh, for someone taking a city. M military emergency against Norway and Poland. Both failed. Okay. Okay. Um, Norway's actually losing one of the towns they took from Mongolia. Yeah, Mongolia is pretty much screwed at this point. I don't think them and Khmer, I think, are pretty much out. I don't know that there's anything either of them can do. Um, Indonesia still has potentially a lot of room there, so maybe. But it looks like they might end up fighting Norway here, too. Also, they do have a religion, but the downside is, you know, there's also a religion here for, uh, Poland. So, yeah, yeah. Let's actually look at the religious tab. That's one. Yeah, she's actually losing her religion compared to uh, Poland. So, um, um, uh, Khmer ended up holding on, and now uh, Gilgamesh has, like, no military. Yeah, they're a little weak right now. Norway's looking really strong on that military. I really, really, really feel like Norway might end up declaring war south over here towards Poland because everyone hates them. And they're not at war anymore. So, I would not be surprised to see Poland getting absolutely destroyed here. Would not be surprised. Japan. Are you at war? Yeah, he turned, uh, he declared war on Gilgamesh. Uh, I don't see that working out well, because this is not particularly great. And then you also have crossbows. Uh, I don't see that working great. So Japan, yeah, yeah, that might not be too good. Uh, how is Gandhi? He is fine. Not declaring war on anyone. Sparta's not declaring war on anyone. All right, so let's just keep turns advancing. We'll keep an eye on this war, but like I said, I just don't see it really being able to make much of a difference here. Maybe Sipar, but they don't have anything to bring down the walls. Really? And that crossbow is going to do a lot of work, and that also means that the damage from the walls is going to be doing the crossbow damage. So, these guys are really going to get hurt pretty hard here. Yeah, as you can see, this is just going to be a lot of damage. And Japan's having to take troops quite far as well. Um, they do have a couple catapults back there, but they're not in a position to help out. Uh, the only thing that could happen, and this might be an advantage 
for Japan is if uh, Khmer ends up trying to take back his town. And then uh, forces Samaria to split the troops. What do we got over here? Norway still holding on. Still hasn't declared on anyone. Which I'm finding a little strange. Because he's got so much combat strength. And Poland's only at 416. So I would think he would want to go to declare. I would think. Okay, you got the capital. Let's go ahead and uh, put a pause here, though, in this episode here. So let's go ahead and disable auto turn. We'll let it go until it runs out. But you can see Japan's not even barely getting troops on land before they're just dying off. Um, was it China that invaded Japan, or was it Japan that invaded China? And then the hurricanes ended up knocking out their troops. I thought it was Japan invaded China, and then, like, two hurricanes ended up wiping out the fleets. That's what it's kind of reminding me of here. So, yeah. All right. So, who's in first place right now? Gilgi is still in first place. Gandhi is in second. And Japan is actually in third. Huh. So, the three civs that currently do not share an island with people, Gandhi, Japan, and Gorgo, are all right up there for the lead. So, that ended up working out pretty well for them. Harold is still pretty much uh, in a distant fit. Um, Gilgamesh is still looking pretty good in first place. Now, the question is, are they going to be able to hold on to that long term? And I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because they're not going to be able to expand anymore. Japan could potentially, well, one of the two could put a town down here still. Um, Japan still also has, there's this whole island over here that no one's settling to. And in fact, this could become all of Poland. So Poland could very easily sneak in there as well if they keep settling down here um, just by getting a huge empire score. Who is probably not going to be able to maintain out of these? Man, I kind of feel like Greece is eventually just going to kind of fall off because she doesn't have a lot of room and she doesn't have a whole lot of area to go to. I guess she could settle over there, um, but we'll see. She did go settle over there. Yeah, I mean, she could also launch an attack on India. But once again, attacking across water is probably not going to work out too well. And she doesn't have a huge force either. But India has a larger uh, military than she does. All right. Well, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment, and let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, and share your support. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye, everyone.